So, hi. Good afternoon. So let's start our presentation. RabbitMQ lets OpenStack cluster supporting uh, 13,000 hypervisors in one region. So, yeah, as I uh, thanks for sharing. Uh, he's Masahito Tomodori, and I'm Yushiro Furukawa. So let's start. And this is today's agenda. So first of all, I will explain about our private cloud named Beluda, and revisit RPC, and then introduce the new Oslo message HTTP driver. Yeah. First of all, uh, we are managing the Beluda as a private cloud in EDY Corporation. And the point is using OpenStack as an infrastructure layer and provides a bunch of um, services. And here is an IR scale of Beluda. So I will explain the, in the green box. So we are providing the bare metal provisioning services as well as the virtual machine creation. So more than uh, for, for 600,000, uh, 46,600 thousand hypervisors, ah, sorry, virtual servers, uh, physical parameter servers, and the 15,000 hypervisors. We are managing one open stack, and the many virtual machines we are managing. So here is the open stack scale technical bottleneck um, compared to the number of hypervisors. So one, no issue. And 10, of course, no issue. And if 100, and hitting API server bottle uh, workload and the keystone token management we hitting and the 500 and over 1000 so many issue hitting about the technical bottleneck and today's main topic is here so OpenStack internal RPC stability many trouble with our gravity and queue this is the main topic and the uh, MySQL DB performance and instance scheduling issue and software delivery to all hypervisors is kind of ish, um, issue and then also tends to be bottleneck. But like the, today, uh, I will explain about uh, this topic. And this topic is not only for the 500 hypervisors, but also like lesson learned can be applied to the small cluster as well. And here is the internal communication in OpenStack from component, oh, sorry, uh, services layer. So from the, between the services, the, as you know, the OpenStack services is well isolated and distributed. So the HTTP is like the communication to via the API request. On the other hand, the, let's dive into the NOVA. So, and the inside the NOVA, uh, component internal communication uses the RPC as a stand for remote procedure call over RabbitMQ. So let's start, please imagine that so let's create one VM instances. So Nova API uh, received the request and the actual VM creation needed to send to the Nova compute side in the hypervisor layer. At that point, so like the please spawn the ingrid, uh, spawn the instance. At that time, the um, Nova uses, Nova Contactor uses the RPC over the Rabbit MQ. So from OpenStack point of view, the upside, the RPC, left side is the RPC client and the right side is the RPC server. And there, OpenStack uses the Oslo messaging driver, uh, Oslo messaging uh, as a like the driver to communicate with the uh, Rabbit MQ. So the downside explains the uh, Rabbit MQ layers. So that API layer can be our publisher and send a message to the RabbitMQ and then queue as a topic queue. And the compute side as a subscriber and then compute the messages. And finally, the launch or spawn the VM instances in hypervisor layers. So in case of the Oslo messaging LPC, the, there are two types of communication, so uh, two types of RPC. The one is the code, and the other one is the cast. So let me introduce the code first. Uh, so very sim simplified uh, ex explanation. So code RPC just wait a reply, and the cast RPC doesn't wait a reply. Uh, only this is the difference. And the yeah, bottom side uh, explains about the RabbitMQ point of view. And the uh, RPC client tend to the, send to the message as topic Q, and the so from that RPC call and listen and subscribe the message from the RPC server side, and then uh, in the RPC server side, actually 
process and running and send a reply messages as a reply queue. And finally, RPC client get a return value or the receive the message, and the process is completed. This is RPC call. And on the other hand, the RPC cast is sent to topic queue and subscribes and runs some processes. That's all. It's very simple. Yeah, and we found the two big problems in RabbitMQ driver. The first one, uh, number, problem one, is a huge number of queues, publishers, and subscribers makes RabbitMQ um, heavy workload. And problem two is RabbitMQ is SPOF, so single point of failure, the open stack architecture. So the once we stop the RabbitMQ, you know that we cannot create a VM and we cannot create a virtual router, we cannot issue token in Keystone, something like that. And this is a common troubles with RabbitMQ. And we sometimes hit some troubles and about like message sometimes has lost when creating the uh, when check checking the open stuff log. And the restarting some issues happen. So Let's restart the Nova Compute Services, and we try to restart the more than 200 Nova Compute at the same time. The, after that, the, I was believing the restarting operation is like a magic, magic operation, so everything can be solved in a flash. I was thinking, but they, it doesn't work. So this connection occurred to RabbitMQ. So the mechanism shows like that. So send the, after restarting the Nova Compute, the sense of the Tons of RPC message goes to the Rabbit to MQ from Nova Compute, and Rabbit MQ becomes high road. And after becoming the high road Rabbit MQ, they try to disconnect existing connections to keep the cluster running. After from the RPC client, it means Nova Compute point of view that RPC messages is timed out, so the retry logic will resend the RPC message. It is grouping from the step one to step four. That's occurred. And the, on the other hand, so I cannot trace RPC message from open uh, RabbitMQ log. So when, I, when we check the RabbitMQ log, but we cannot understand which method is trying to call to, from to where, so we cannot understand it. And RabbitMQ becomes unstable with unknown reason. Sometimes get heavy about that. So this is the, our operation and effort to, for the Remit MQ to overcome this situation. So from the technical point of view, of course we did some scale up and version up for the Remit MQ. And the, as I said, like I, we are having the many like 1,000 hypervisors so far. So um, distributed Remit MQ cluster for Nova and Neutron. And inside of the RabbitMQ cluster, the ro two roles exist. One is the data uh, management node and data node. So we separated each role in one RabbitMQ cluster. And finally, we tuned the kernel formatter and the watermark, kind of like the memory threshold in RabbitMQ. And from operation point of view, so as I said, reboot or restart operation mm, is Magical operation. So the we said that Jenkins job to restart RabbitMQ cluster easily, and the second shall stop and start neutron agent when RabbitMQ for neutron is unstable. And regarding the Nova, this is like very like I think it would work. So the periodic restart RabbitMQ cluster for every night. So the RabbitMQ for Nova becomes stable. However, that these were never ending the chase. So similar issue happened after increasing um, 500 hypervisors. And finally, uh, we hit its limit around 3,000 hypervisors in 2020s. So we changed the mind. And the, it's time to start a new project for large scale open Oslo message with the project. So here after, the Masahito explains about that. Uh -huh. uh, thank you, Shou. Yeah, I'm really, I really remember that with memories, and I, I want to back to that time. Anyway, uh, it's time to start a new project for large-scale offshore messaging deployment, so that's why we started it. Anyway, 
So the, for the Oslo Messaging Large Scale Driver Project, we defined, uh, defined well, ma we made the two goals. One is to support super large scale open source cluster over 40,000 hypervisors in one single cluster. Not the whole thing, one four, it's about 40, 40,000. And also that we want to remove the single point of failure of open stack internal communication like RabbitMQ. And for this today's uh, presentation, I want to talk everything, but it takes uh, three, four hours. So that's why I try to pick up the main uh, core part of this uh, project. And also the, that's why the please ask me the, after this session if you have any questions or something, anything. Okay, first, the Oslo messaging driver architecture. This is a quick overview of the Oslo messaging and its internal uh, communication. Uh, sorry, I think the character is a bit clashed. So the, let me say the left side box is a client side and the right side is a server side, uh, server of the RPC. And the, basically the Oslo messaging sends a message from client to server using the driver protocol. So that's why the, we decided to implement the large scale, a driver for large scale in this red box part. Okay, then let's move, before moving on to the real, the, our driver part, let, let me quickly explain that what really driver and driver protocol do in the host messaging. Left side is the uh, same figure, uh, same figure usually explains. Like in the RPC call type, the client make a call and one of the topic server do some things and then send back the reply. Okay, then let's go to the right side. The, in the RabbitMQ driver side, first, RP, RPC client can recognize what is the topic of the RPC and then the send it to the appropriate topic. And second, driver layer picks up one of RPC server from topic server as a destination. In RabbitMQ case, the RabbitMQ is PubSub model messaging broker. So that's why this happened on the, right, let's say, PubSub protocol. No one does it. And then, uh, then the next third step, the RPC server dispatches the received message to the appropriate open stack services. Are not appropriate, sorry, the backend services, let's say Nova Compute, Nova Conductor, and blah, 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 blah. And finally, the R once the RPC server has completed the operations, then RPC server return reply message to the reply queue to the RPC client. This is a, what the, what the RabbitMQ driver does, uh, RabbitMQ driver and RabbitMQ protocol does. So RabbitMQ, RabbitMQ itself is not a protocol, but let's say RabbitMQ protocol. And then, okay, this is actually goal of the, the, uh, the goal of the, our HTTP driver. So the, in the HTTP driver, the purple box, left side is a RPC client, and the right side is a RPC server. So in the, our HTTP driver, the client directly sends a request to the RPC server using the HTTP protocol. And let me explain how it is, real, it is realized. So when the RPC server started, the RPC server tried to register its server information to the console cluster. In the, that information includes two type of information. First one is Oslo messaging layer information, let's say topic, the Oslo messaging host, like that. And second part is HTTP protocol layer information, let's say host, IP address, port number, yep, that's all. And then RPC server start to listen the RPC request. Then the, when the RPC client, I mean like OpenStack process, when, uh, sorry, when OpenStack process try to make a RPC request, the RPC client fetch the server list which listen on listen the specific topic from the console server and RPC client picks up one of the target server from the list. And then 
the RPC client directly send the RPC content to the RPC server using HTTP protocol. And in the bottom, you can see the HTTP broadcaster, but let's ignore right now because I, I will jump on to it later. So by using this architecture, uh, we solve the two big problems usually explained. First one, first improvement is data flow and endpoint information are separated. In the RabbitMQ uh, sorry, the, in the RabbitMQ cases, the Q, Q name or uh, yeah, Q name is a uh, let's say target information, and the message inside the Q is a uh, data. But in this case, the data is on HTTP protocol, uh, let's say you know HTTP connections, but the uh, date, uh, endpoint information is in the console. And second part is, the, as, as I explained a lot again, the direct API call without SPOF. So even though, so as you can see, no, no box between the client and server. So that's why the SPOF is realized. Then the, let me quickly the, explain the first the tricks in the HP driver. And then I will explain the two tricks. First one is the RPC server return known in cast RPC once the server receives a message. So cast is a, uh, cast RPC is a RPC call which doesn't send a reply to the user, uh, so the client in also messaging layer. A second is HTTP broadcast realize, uh, sorry, RPC broadcast is, sorry, not, not RPC broadcast. RPC fanout is realized by HTTP broadcaster process. Okay, then let me explain the HP driver uh, server architecture, server side architecture. So the blue box that represent OpenStack process itself, Python process. The purple box represents the Oslo messaging layer uh, architecture or mechanism. And green box is uh, one of the also messaging and the callback style listener. And the yellow box is uh, what we developed. So when the HP driver, uh, sorry, RPC server starts, the HP driver starts one HTTP server which listen two paths. One is call and second is cast. So for the call API, it's really easy to understand. Hey, let's say the client sends some request, and then call request, uh, sorry, call path, call, call, sorry, call endpoint, uh, sends back the request to the dispatcher, and then again uh, pass it to the real OpenStack service endpoint and do some things, and then reply back, the reply, back to the reply to the dispatcher call method and the client. That's easy to understand. And uh, this, the cast side, this is a separate trick I explained. The, in the cast, uh, sorry, cast uh, HTTP call, first client make a request to the cast endpoint. And then once the cast, uh, the HTTP server receives the content, the HTTP server quickly responds the HTTP protocol uh, message to the client. And then after that, the RPC uh, sorry, the HTTP drive, the HTTP server, that this uh, sends a message to the dispatcher, and then dispatcher sends a message to the service endpoint. So by doing this, the RPC client doesn't need to wait the any like action in the server side, and then it can like start the next operation quickly uh, in client side. That's the HP driver server side architecture. Uh, next is the client side architecture. Actually, it's a bit like simple compared to the server side. So the yellow box is what we developed, and the in, inside also messaging, the once the RPC client try to make a request. Uh, somehow the request come to the driver layer and the HTTP driver creates the RP target uh, server list from the console and then picks it up, 
picks up the one of the target server, and then the use appropriate HTTP request to the RPC server, like call or cast. And in case of finance, the, it sends a broadcaster, which I will explain later. And this is the uh, endpoint information example on the console cluster. So left side is a, uh, uh, let's say, uh, queue name, uh, no, 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 endpoint name. It's similar to the, uh, let's say, queue name in the Rabbit MQ case. Uh, you can see the Nova console host, Nova scheduler, Nova conductor, and Nova compute. And the right side, it ex uh, shows the uh, real host name of each topics. Let's say Nova conductor zero some 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 and you can see the same figure in the in this the URL so that's why the, you don't need to take a picture a lot. Okay, then let's move on to the second uh, tricks we developed. So the broadcaster is a uh, one of a uh, second our tricks. The broadcaster process amplifies the HTTP request to all target RPC server. So why the reason we developed it is the, uh, I, I forget that you should explain the fan out. It's a, ah, okay, okay, I see. So the, in the OSLO messaging layer, the upper layer of the driver, the, it has a feature to send the same RPC call to the all servers which listen the one topic. So in order to do that with the 10,000 the hypervisor case, let's say the RPC client can't make a 10,000 HTTP call from client to server in one shot. Even uh, let's say it might take 10 hundred seconds or more. So that's why we developed the broadcaster to amplify the HTTP request. From RPC client perspective, by using this broadcaster, the client sends only one message to the broadcaster, and then broadcaster uh, quickly responds, hey, I received it. And after that, broadcaster will be in, cha uh, will be in charge of to send the, this received message to send all the target hosts instead of the client. So by doing this client side, don't need to wait the 10,000 HTTP request as a client. Okay, then, ah, I shouldn't show answer. <laughs> so the, this is our design, uh, design and development. And actually, the, as usual said, the, we hit the, we, we explain, uh, we experienced the sweet memory with uh, Rabbit MQ. Uh, four years ago, and then we developed this HTTP driver uh, one, uh, one two, two, three years ago, and then the, we we have already deployed it to the our production cluster with uh, thirteen thousand uh, hypervisors two, two, three years ago, and then after two years of ex our experience using the HTTP driver, actually so stable, we found zero issue and no problems. We don't need to wake up midnight. That's a good point. <laughs> okay. Then the, actually, this is a uh, let's say little known fact. After you, not using the rabbit image. So the I think the most open stuff are said. Hey, rabbit image lost a message sometimes, but we realize that rabbit image doesn't lose any message. So the reason uh, we found that using the HTTP driver. So first, we understand that the why we uh, define the RabbitMQ lost message is the RPC server sometimes left all the host topic queue after stopping in, even though after stopping in the RabbitMQ cluster. So that's why the, from RPC client point of view, RPC client can send a message to a host queue even though the host, uh, let's say RPC server is not working. And then, then the, no one subscribes a message from the queue, and then the client side get hits the RPC timeout error. So from the OpenStack log point of view, client can send a message correctly, but hitting timeout 
Mm, looks like the RabbitMQ lost the message. We conclude, we easily conclude it. However, the we when we using uh, by using the HP driver, we uh, notice it's not true. So the in in case of HTTP driver, RPC server stop means that there is no TCP socket in the RPC server side. So that's why the RPC client can detect the RPC server is down. Because if the no socket case, the let's say Linux or any like HTTP connection can't be established. So that's why the it, uh, RPC client that can output the reason into a log. Yes, so that's, uh, this is uh, like a big lesson learned from the using HTTP driver. <coughs> Excuse me. So then the, before I'm going to finish the presentation, let's quickly do the HTTP driver FAQ. So first, the single point of failure location is only changed from RabbitMQ to console, right? So my answer is no. Actually, from the, our HTTP driver architecture point of view, as long as service discovery is available, it works. So we can uh, use DNS if needed. And second, are there any topics you don't talk today? Yes, a lot, as I said. The, I, as I said, I can speak, like say, for hours, half day, if you, uh, if I have a chance for more details. And the third point is, the, is HTTP driver superior to RabbitMQ in every aspect? My answer is no. Actually, in case of a small OpenStack cluster, RabbitMQ is much easier for operation point of view. So let's say since RabbitMQ driver is centralized model, so it can monitor whole messaging traffic or amount or some things of message and the status of message backlog. So that's why it's easy to manage. And also, the, from RabbitMQ point of, of view, uh, all RPC client and RPC server are, let's say, client of the RabbitMQ from like, let's say, a TCP connection point of view. So that's why like, it's easy to configure IP ACL and everything in this case. And finally, let me explain, uh, let me show the upstream contribution progress of this HTTP driver. So the spec of the, uh, sorry, spec of the HTTP driver is already accepted the, actually one year ago. And for the upstream contribution of the code itself is ongoing right now. Um, because of the, some other task reasons, the, we try to like, finish the upstream task, up, upstream of the HTTP, HTTP driver in the epoch C cycle. Epoch C is the next development cycle. Yep. Thank you.